Hello, I have a kind of intriguing subject today. The subject is, who are you, really? Seems like a good one to end the year on. A time to begin uh, a new cycle, a time to rethink where you're going and what you want to do and what resolutions you would like to live by. And I think the first question to ask is, well, who am I? There's a very uh, intriguing story in India about the gods, as they call them, and the demons. And uh, the leader of the gods was called Indira, and the head of the uh, demons, the president or king or whatever of the demons, was called Virochana. And they had both heard the uh, news that if a person can realize who he really is, then he will be the ruler of everything. And the Lord's thought, that they, I mean, the God's thought, well, if we can realize who we really are, then we'll be able to convert all other beings to this truth, and all of us will share in an infinite perfection. And so with this motive, they elected to send their king, Indira, to God, Brajapati. And uh, the demons thought, on the other hand, that if we can find out who we are and get control over everything, then we'll be able to finally become victorious over those gods and we'll, we'll uh, be the masters of everything. And so with this motive, they sent their king, uh, Virochana, also to uh, Prajapati, to God, to uh, get this great, great secret. And they arrived both together and Prajapati said to them, well, this is a very important thing you're asking me. The, you have to become more uh, perfected in your inner understanding before you can even grasp the truth of what I'm saying. And so he said, you have to go off and pray and meditate and practice austerities for 32 years. Well, 32 years in the uh, time of the gods, um, gods means our word angels, I suppose, um, that, that's not very long. But uh, uh, anyway, after 32 years, they came back and they said, now tell us, Lord. And he said, well, go to that lake over there and see what you, tell me what you see. And the, uh, they both went to the lake and looked and they saw their, their uh, reflections in the water. And they came back and said, well, I, we saw our reflections. And, and, the, uh, and God said to them, well, what you saw in the water, that's who you are. And Virochana was very happy and went home declaring that uh, God was himself. And so ever since then, demonic types of people have always thought that the uh, ego is God and that uh, they have to pamper the ego and pamper their physical desires and live in that way. And uh, Indira got part way home when he began to think, well, wait a minute, there's something really fishy about this, this idea. <clears throat> when I looked at my image 32 years ago, I was dressed in purple and had my, my uh, hair shorn and my locks combed and everything was just uh, neat and beautiful and regal. But after 32 years, I looked like an anchorite with matted locks and uh, clothes that were uh, getting old and tattered. And he said, well, if I can change that much in just 32 years, then this can't be any kind of God that I, or true self that I'm looking for. It, it, uh, I've got to find something that's more permanent. And so he came back to Prajapati and said, Prajapati, this, there's something wrong with this teaching. And Prajapati smiled and he said, well, I'm glad you've understood. He said, that is a part of who you are. Therefore, I wasn't telling you something false, but the truth is something much, much deeper than that. If you want to understand it on a deeper level, then you have to go off for another 32 years. And so he went off for another 32 years and meditated and practiced penance and austerities. And finally he came back and uh, uh, said, well, Lord, who, who am I really? And the Lord said, well, who's asking this question? And Indira said, well, what do you mean? I, Indira, of course. And so God said, well, then you, Indira, are the self. And Inder was very pleased, and he started going home with this message until he got about halfway, and then he began to think, well, wait a minute, I'm a very different person psychologically 
than I was 40, 64 years ago. And if I can change that much in that length of time, then even I in this personality, uh, there's something deeper than that part of me which can change. I can even lose the name Indira, but yet I'm still me underneath it all. Who am I really? And he went back to God and he said, Lord, I'm still not satisfied. And the Lord said, ah, you're beginning to understand. He said that uh, it's true that your personality is a part of yourself. It's an expression of yourself. But the true self is even deeper than that. If you want to understand that truth, you must go away for another, 60, another 32 years into the forest to pray. So Indra did it. After all, 96 years still isn't all that much in the life of a god. And at the end of that time, he didn't have to come and ask questions. He knew who he was. He knew that he was Parajapati. He was one with the Lord. He was one with the infinite. And so it is that if we want to know who we really are, we have to get down below these appearances. The body changes. The body of a child, the body of an old man, it's still the same person, but how he looks is very different. Still, you look into the eyes and you see the same person there. And the same with the personality. The personality will change according to qualities that you've developed, according to uh, challenges that you've met and overcome, according to failure that you've experienced, according to great disappointments, according to victories. All these things unite to make the, uh, uh, the person of 70 very different from the person of 10. Even if the person of 10 had those potentials, the person of 70, if he's, if he's met his victories and his challenges and become victorious, he will show that. He will show how he's lived. It's been said wisely that the first 40 years of our lives, we have the faces that God gave us, that is to say our parents gave us, and after that it's the face we've made for ourselves. And so we do change in our personalities. Things that used to bother us no longer bother us. Things that we used to want. I remember a chocolate when I was in school in Switzerland that I just loved. And I went back there many years later and saw this same chocolate and uh, bought it. I love Swiss chocolate, but this was a particular kind of chocolate. And I found I couldn't even swallow the first bite. It was so sweet, the sort of thing a child might like. But my tastes had changed. In many ways, I'm no longer what I was. You're no longer what you were. And you'll change so much you won't even recognize yourself on that level. But at the seat of all of this, at the heart of all of this, there is something that always remains the same. That is who you really are. It's like peeling an onion. You get rid of peel after peel after peel. What's left finally? Well, nothing. And that's what you are, basically. No thing. No one thing. You are an essential consciousness that has no up or down, no male or female, no success or failure, no hope or disappointment, no joy or sorrow and suffering, none of these. These are just waves on the surface of the mind. What's down at the center of it all is that which cannot be touched by anything. The Bhagavad Gita says that fire cannot burn it, swords cannot cut it, wind cannot dry it up, water cannot drown it. It is more subtle than matter, more subtle than energy, more subtle than the thoughts with which you think. That is the reality. Now, if you can live from that center, then you'll be surprised how many things you can do, because from your center, you can go in any direction. You can actually accomplish anything you set your, your heart to. Whereas if you're already committed out here on the uh, periphery of the wheel, let's say, at the end of a, like a bicycle wheel, at the end of one of the spokes, then you don't have any relation to any of the other spokes. The only relation with them is going back to the center to which all of those spokes are united. If you live at that center, then you can bring the power that comes, the wisdom that comes, the joy that comes from being at that center to bear on anything that you try to do. I remember one time my spiritual teacher, Paramahansa Yogananda, was urging me to uh, work on a particular fault. And I said, 
that uh, it's so difficult, it keeps coming back. And he said, habits can be changed in a, in a day. They are only a matter of the concentration of the mind. You're concentrating one way, concentrate another way and your habit will be gone. And I found that that was so, except it took me a lot more than a day. But the more you develop that mental freedom, the more you'll find that you can do it in a day. You can do it in an instant. Yogananda really, I was astounded when a disciple told me this, a fellow disciple. He said he never did anything from habit, even tying his shoes. Everything he did was a conscious act, a deliberate act. That doesn't mean slow and heavy, but he was conscious of what he was doing. And everything came, not from habit, but from that inner freedom that comes when you have learned who you really are and can live from that point. Now, a beautiful thing in this truth is that when you find who you really are, and even find it just on a mental level, sort of understanding that this is what I'm looking for, striving to get to that center, even the thought is liberating, that that is what your center is. The more you live even in that thought, the more you will find that that's who everybody is. And you can relate to other people from that level. And the curious thing is that, first of all, as you relate to people on that level, you see yourself in them. You see that one unchanging self is the heart of everything in the world. But again, because you relate in that way to other people and other things, they respond in that way to you. Even though they aren't even conscious of that level, they're conscious that you're touching them. They feel that you're a friend of theirs. They feel that they, they know you in some way. There's a really beautiful story about Paramahansa Yogananda. He was the author of Autobiography of a Yogi, that famous book. And uh, he was my spiritual teacher. I consider that the greatest blessing in my life. But there was a lovely story that another disciple told me. He was sitting in a chair giving, she was a secretary, and he was giving her some dictation. There was a flower on the table between them, and she noticed several times as, as he was talking that the flower was pointed toward him. It was a rose. Then somebody came to the door, and he had to get up and go to the door and talk to them. And uh, this woman, this secretary, looked at the rose and did a double take. She couldn't believe it, because the rose was pointing toward the door where he was. And she thought, well, I th I'm sure I saw it pointing toward where he was sitting in the chair. And then he came back and he sat down and she went on. It was not yet very much on a conscious level. She sort of, these were sort of subconscious impressions. But uh, she looked again at the rose and saw to her surprise, but it was looking at him. But wasn't it just looking at the door? Somebody else came to the door and this time she began to pay attention. And she looked at the rose after a few moments, she saw it was pointing toward the door. Then he came and sat down, and after a little bit, she saw the rose was again pointing toward him. And she said, sir, you have a new disciple. <laughs> the, the, uh, the way that saints in all traditions have found that even nature responds, flowers respond, animals respond, that beautiful story of uh, St. Francis and the Wolf of Gubbio, he was traveling uh, it's interesting to go to Italy now and find those old, old names still there, the same old town, the same old name. And uh, so you can go from Assisi to Gubbio very easily. It's a long walk, a short drive. And uh, he visited Gubbio one day when the village was up in arms. They were all coming out with pitchforks and uh, uh, scythes and so on. There was a wolf that had been attacking their, their sheep and killing them. And they were determined to get this wolf. It was a very particularly vicious specimen. And uh, I believe it had attacked, and, uh, uh, attacked people too. But anyway, St. Francis said, wait a minute. They saw the wolf there, but they were all determined to get him. He said, let me go talk to him. And they said, oh, don't go. He's very vicious. He'll just kill you. And he said, no, never mind. He's my brother. And that's how he saw everybody in this world as his brother and sister, not just people, but things, fire, plants, animals, birds, trees, everything to him was just a part of that one self, you see. So he went to this wolf, and the wolf didn't attack him, didn't run away. 
it just sort of looked at him. And St. Francis talked to him of love and said, told him, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be this way. People are all getting angry with you for this. They want, to, they want revenge on you, but I, you're my friend. I'm your friend, and I, I want to win you in another way. And this wolf came and licked his feet and allowed him to caress him, and he became the town mascot. And he actually became the, the pet of the whole town, completely changed, just from that contact. Well, you read this in history and you say, well, I don't know anybody who's like that, and you just assume that it can't be. But it is, and it's a part of the life stories of great saints in all religions. It can be the life story of you, if you will just get to know who you really are. Now, back to New Year's resolutions and all those things. The more you can know who you are, the more you will be at that center, the more free you will be from your habits, the more you can make those resolutions stick, the more you can, you'll, you'll find that you'll be able to say, well, I'm going to go this direction now, and you'll be able to. There may be great obstacles, but you'll find your mindset is that way, and there's nothing that you cannot accomplish once you do it in the right way, and that means from your center, not from your periphery. Any new direction that you try to take, any new job that you try to do, any problem that you've had with people, um, depending on how much you put into it, it isn't, I mean, Jesus was crucified. It isn't as if his love won everyone. Sometimes that love is so great that it wins more enemies because darkness hates the light. Jesus said that too. You'll certainly get a rise out of them when you're at that, at that point of being centered in yourself. In other words, you'll change them anyway. In some way, they will be brought face to face with who they are, and they may reject that because they're so restless and full of evil, but uh, even that reminder will in the end have an impact on them. People years later will remember still and begin to think remorsefully, maybe I should have been different, maybe I shouldn't have acted that way. You will be an influence for good, wherever you go. Even if you awaken the bad in other people, it's like bringing pus out of a, a, a pimple and or out of a boil in order to free the body of that toxin. Even the enmity that you awaken others will be a salutary experience for them because it will bring them face to face with themselves. This is what I found with Yogananda, that he was like a flawless mirror. He would look at you and you'd somehow understand yourself in a new way. You'd see yourself reflected back, not that if you were angry, he would look angry, rather that if you were angry, he would look calm, and you'd suddenly understand, oh, how silly this anger is, how trivial, how superficial. Now, the way to get to that awareness of who you are, albeit I don't want to suggest that you spend 96 years in the forest, I doubt you'll be around long enough for that, but if you will meditate every day, you can reach that. You can reach it more and more, the farther, or I should say the deeper you go, into the inner silence. Get away from all the extraneous thoughts into your inner center by the practice of daily meditation and listen to the voice of silence reminding you who you are, who you really are, and therefore what your potential is is and what you can become. And remember finally the words of Jesus, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Anything that you want will be enhanced if you go here, but otherwise it's like quicksilver. Whatever you try to get, you grasp it and it flies from your grasp. Everything comes to you if you love God, and everything flees you if you ignore him. Have a wonderful new year and joy to you.